Loki, 2017, what have you made of it so far? Obviously, since you returned, just what has it all been like being back a part of Impact Wrestling? Well, it's been a whirlwind, to say the least. Uh, I didn't expect to really be in this position uh, at this time. It wasn't really a consideration at the earlier part of the year. Uh, I was actually more focused on transitioning away from wrestling, and yet here I am. So it's definitely a, a pleasant surprise at the moment. And, and in terms of your return, just how did it come about? What, what conversations would take in place before the decision was made for you to return? Well, I was approached by Sanjay Dutt, who represents the company. And uh, he, he explained to me, oh, thank you. He explained to me that this is a different environment and they were focusing more on the quality of of what we do as opposed to years past when it was uh, the opinions of management. So it's more talent focused as opposed to years past, which is more theatrical. And right now it seems to be a positive upswing. We're gaining momentum. Everything seems to be paying off because we're going back to old fashioned hard work. So that was the initial conversation that we're going back to talent based rather than the, the, the theatrics behind it. So that was a, a very positive thing for me and it ultimately led me coming back. And, and in terms of the matches you've had so far, I think you can really see that that's the case, that you know some real tough battles that you've taken part in. It. Are they the kind of fights you enjoy more rather than the ones that are maybe worked a little bit more? Yes, I do because that is pro wrestling. Professional wrestling has wrestling involved in it. We're not actors. We're not entertainers. This is this is why I tweeted this recently. Sports entertainment is professional laziness because people, instead of earning their reputations, maturing within the industry of which they're engaging in, they're trying to shortcut everything and become a gimmick. A gimmick only has but a short time frame to survive. Quality, as long as it is maintained, will have longevity. So right now, the physicality and the competitiveness of pro wrestling has been reintroduced into impact. And when looking at the company, obviously it's, it's something that you've played such a big part of of the history. It must be something you're proud of to know the X Division and the company itself. You've, you've been there since such an early stage. Yeah, I, I've had great influence in the company's development because of the X Division. But it's quite similar now as far as the atmosphere of global it's quite similar to the beginning stages of TNA. Why? Because Jeff is in control. Jeff is at the helm. You have a former wrestler or a person who is quite familiar with the lifestyle and the experience of a performer leading the way. And it, it's quite similar to the beginning where the early stages was, or it was an opportunity for younger professionals to, to try to make a name for themselves. Right now, it seems to be the exact same thing have much more experience in the X Division than before, but you're also having much more variety in the X Division than before of qualified, incredible performers. Right now, we have uh, a young, exciting performer in Desmond Xavier. This is the, the physical capabilities that he has are just mind-blowing, and he's not even very well-groomed yet. He's not very well developed yet, so imagine when he gets there. Then we have people like Elijo de Fantasma from Mexico. He has the lineage, he has the credibility, he has the foundation of the Lucha Libre style, but he understands the, the nature of the environment. He understands in America the profession is different, and he understands how to adapt to it. We have Matt Seidel, world-renowned world experience. So the level of competition is actually higher than it has been in years past. We have Ishimori from Pro Wrestling Noah in Japan. I mean, we're, we're having variety, but we're having high quality. And it's very exciting because as one of the founders of the X Division, to me, the lineage and the legacy will continue as long as we maintain that fundamental 
And you mentioned there that you're one of the founders. I'm, in terms of the younger wrestlers that are here, do you feel that it's kind of your responsibility to give them a bit of advice and, you know, make sure that they go down the right path? Yes. It's, it's the only responsibility that needs to be maintained because they want to be a part of something that has such a special quality and its identification for the company. It's the company's identity. When people talk about impact, they talk about the X Division. And when you look at the X Division, it, it did seem for a, a small amount of time that the X Division was kind of like a glass ceiling in terms of being the X Division champion. Would you win the World Heavyweight title? Would you be in consideration for it? But obviously that, that has gone away now. And would you say that that's, that is the aim for yourself to be a, a world champion with GFW? Well, with Global, that was my intent coming in. It wasn't necessarily the X Division. Because I, I told Sanjay, I want Lashley. And that was when Lashley was the champion. Right now, Alberto is the champion. Either way, I don't care who it is, I want the champion. Because they've never seen anyone as aggressive, as ferocious, and as skilled as somebody at my size. On top of that, I'm far more equipped than most of the heavyweights because of my experience. So... With that opportunity, of course, I want a shot at the, at the championship, but I don't really feel like I need to earn anything further because I've accomplished everything in that company. And I have the reputation and I have the work ethic which backs up everything that I say. That's the reason why I don't speak often, because I don't need to sit here and blow smoke. I can just simply show you in that ring. And as of yet, I seem to be delivering every single time. And in terms of delivering, obviously you, yourself and everyone at Impact were, were in India recently. It, some really in, enjoyable shows that w were screened. And in terms of that experience, just how much did you enjoy it being a part of something a bit different, that different culture? Oh, I loved being in India. It was such a, a fun experience. And not in the sense that we went and did a whole bunch because I was literally there for three and a half days. Or, matter of fact, less than that. I arrived on... I believe it was that Friday night, performed on that Saturday, performed on that Sunday, and then that Sunday evening, we had to fly out. So it was a little over two days um, that we were there. Um, but just the, the culture, being there, speaking to the, the people who were there, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to go to, I, want, I can't remember the name at the moment, forgive me for that. It's the, the their traditional wrestling style that they have there. It's a, a unique name. Um, but I was trying to get with Mahapali Shira to see if we can go visit one of the traditional wrestling facilities that are there. And they actually had some wrestlers there at the, at the studio at, at the, the event. And uh, I just wanted to say as, a, as an X Division champion that I went to India and trained with their wrestlers. Because to me, that adds much more of a value in, in, in what we do as wrestlers. That I've had further experience internationally with newer, newer wrestling styles. Like there's, they have their traditional wrestling style in India. I know that there's uh, indigenous people in Brazil that have a particular wrestling style. So, I mean, I, as a professional wrestler, I, I always look to gain more experience in, in different cultures. Uh, being there in front of a different audience was fun because they, they were uncertain at certain times on who to cheer for and who to boo, but they simply had fun doing it. So that makes it more special for us as performers, going out there and doing what we love to do, and regardless of whether we're booed or 
or were cheered, the audience, you can tell that they're having fun because the energy is there. And I was going to say, obviously fighting Sanjay in India as well, that must have added to the experience and the atmosphere that you, you had. Well, it was, it was a wild experience because I've seen Sanjay literally grow up. The first time I had wrestled him, I believe, was 2003, I want to say, and, or perhaps 2002. And then fast forward 15 years later, now he's in management for the company that we were a part of, and now he's challenging me for my belt in India. And the thing is, this is a different environment than when we first met. He said it on the microphone. This is no longer New York City. This is no longer the Elks Lodge. I don't have Homicide in the Hit Squad with me. This is a different environment. He came into my environment a bit intimidated. I came into his as a champion. So he had a lot more up on his plate and a lot more working against him because I've already earned mine. The only difference is that now I'm in your backyard as a champion. You have to beat me. That's what he did. And the thing is, he had been chasing the X Division Championship for over 15 years. Always there as a competitor, always there as a challenger, but never could seal the deal. And I think a big part of that was maturity. Because in order to be a champion, you have to be mature enough and disciplined enough to re reach that level. And it's taken him this long to do it. He did it in a very, very unique and special environment. And, you know, I said it myself. I said, let me be the first to congratulate you. Uh, it's fun to watch that because as somebody who's been in this profession this long, I've literally watched him grow up. And, I mean, it's a, a very fulfilling, uh, fulfilling experience to, to have. I was going to say, you mentioned their unique, your, your ring attire that you, you've got now, that the Hitman, the Hitman style attire. Um, I mean, how, how did that all come about? When, when did it go through your mind to, you know, I could, I could wrestle like this? Well, it actually began as a silent protest in, uh, in Japan. It was a business practice I, I disagreed with, and it was my, my silent protest and my final performance in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And uh, it was... I did it as an image replication, and I didn't realize it would end up catching as much attention as it did. And uh, when I did it, we're, despite the fact that my in-ring style draws attention, this became captivating because it was completely different than everyone else, but the difficulty in working in, in an outfit such as that, but still being able to perform in the fashion of which I did, that seemed to be captivating to the, the viewers. It was a, I was approached in returning to global. I was approached in returning as the, the image. And uh, I was all for it. Because this is, again, a new era, a new time. And because I can perform in the fashion that I do, now I can do it way more efficiently because I have so much more experience. So it becomes much more of a fun, a fun execution than it had been in years past. And, and when looking at that outfit, I mean, have, have you had to kind of adapt in, in a way that, you know, the, this, your style of wrestling, has it held you back at all in any matches or has it just been the case you found it, you know, quite easy wearing this suit and, and wrestling? Well, it's, you have to figure out where your limitations lie <clears throat> because the stitching on the suit will create mobility limitation. So I had to figure that out fast with what I'm capable of doing and what I'm not. And since I've been able to have some suits altered, however, the, the return match that I had in April, returning to Global, that was a completely unaltered suit. So I had to really figure out fast what I was capable of doing and what I wasn't. And since I've had suits altered in order to, to manage mobility issues, and it seems to be getting easier and easier just because I have more familiarity. I was actually just going to mention in that first match, coming back, winning the X Division title on, on live TV. How, how special a moment was that? You know, when your music hit and the crowd, you know, really went wild, a lot of people, you know, re reacted very positively to it. How, how much did that mean to you that whole night? Well, it's special because it's an appreciation of what you've done. It's an appreciation for what you bring to the table. And as wrestlers, we're still human. It's, 
still feels good to have people appreciate what you do. So, especially with me being gone in the fashion of which I, I left the last time, and to be able to return and to return with that level of appreciation from the audience and from the fans, I mean, it, it's very humbling because it's a recognition of the, the hard work that has been invested. And then plus, getting matched up against high-quality opponents, you know, that always makes it just that much better. And, and you mentioned there about the, your previous departure. Was it a case when you left that you just thought that was it, you would never return to Impact Wrestling? Kind of, that was, you know, you've had three spells and you thought that was your time done with the company? Well, no, it was just, I'm done here. It was no consideration further than I don't want to be here anymore. And it was because of management. Management was poorly organized, poorly executed, and they were creating more trouble. And because of their lack of professionalism, they ended up eliminating all the hard work that the BDC had done. So to me, it was, this is just a highly toxic environment. I had left a highly toxic environment in the WWE when I was there. I didn't want to return to a toxic environment, and that's exactly what it turned into. So my last step there was, uh, I don't want to be a part of anything like this ever again. And, and you d- just mentioned there the WWE. Is that something that you have any regrets from, or were you glad that you took part in it, you know, did your thing and then, and then got out when you did? No, because it was never my goal to go there in the first place. They had approached me at the height of my career in Japan, at that time, and I was hired virtually on the spot because of Vince McMahon seeing me perform live. So, you know, what happened there was complete disregard for who they brought in. They brought me in, and they treated me just like I was just something to have there, like a toy in a toy box. So, to me, it was it was never my goal to be there. It was an opportunity that created itself. It was offered. I took it, it was what it was, but since then, you know, I I can see that things have changed, but it's still operated by the same person, it's the person I had a problem with, so I I see no sense in even considering anything relevant to them. And and obviously, you're here in the UK right now, just first of all, why are you in the UK? What's going on for you you to be here? Well, this evening we have... uh, And in terms of Impact Wrestling possibly returning to the UK, would you be a supporter of that, coming to do maybe a couple of shows for for the company here? I would be all in for Global returning to to the UK. The last time I was here with Impact, I I almost had my ear sheared off with a lead pipe. So I would like to have a much more positive (laughs) (laughs) uh, return from my performance here in the UK with Impact. And, and looking at your career, obviously, you know, you face so many big names, so many, you know, classic matches as well. If, if I was to put you on the spot and ask you to, you know, pick out one or two matches that were your favourites, what, what would they be? Well, with respect to all the wrestlers that I have competed against, I still don't have favourites. And the reason being is because each wrestler brings something different to the table. Um, what I do appreciate out of... Uh, wrestlers is the level of competitiveness that they bring to the table. It's where they're so competitive that they force you to elevate your game. 
And in the early 2000s, a big part of that was with Brian Danielson, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, many of the people who are considered stars now. It's because I went through all of them. And, but each brings something different to the table. So it's very difficult to pinpoint, okay, this is, this is my favorite and then that one not so much. It's very difficult because each individual brings just different qualities to the, to the equation. So that's hard, but there are matches which do stand out, such as the three-way match that I had in the Tokyo Dome in 2013 against Prince Devitt and Kota Ibushi. This is where I debuted the Hitman look. And the level of performance of which we brought to the table was something very unique because we were so efficient at what we did, at the speed we did it. That's the true test of a pro, a professional can accomplish what needs to be accomplished with much greater time efficiency than everyone else. And I felt like that was a, a clear presentation of that. And, and in terms of impact, you mentioned there the, the management of the previous time, the management that is here. Now, ha- has it just been the case that since you've come back, really, there's you know not been any issues? Well, previously, you know, there might have been one or two. Well, it's not micromanaged. I think that's a big issue micromanagement can create a, an unhealthy environment because you're not trusting the people you have in position to do what needs to be done. In the past, it was it was similar uh, to, to WWE with its micromanaging. Um, and please don't, don't misunderstand me. I have nothing negative to say about WWE because I'm so far removed from, from that company. Uh, it's almost a given that they've changed many of what has gone on there because of how positive their business has turned. So uh, I don't want anyone to, to feel like I'm, I'm burying them. But it's it's when you're, you're nitpicking and you're micromanaging individuals who you went after and asked to be there, and then now you're disrupting their, their execution. That's what happened in the past. And even more so, the lack of diligence from people in management ended up ruining what was becoming something quite special in the BDC. So, you know, it, it's difficult when you're you're contributing so much, especially as performers. You know, we, we use our bodies as our expression. So, you know, when the red light goes off from that camera, we take the damage with us home. So when, when our work is disregarded or passed off as, as non-value, I mean, that, that's just dangerous because you're not going to develop a good relationship with your performers if you're treating them in a fashion. And unfortunately, they, it was a, to- a highly toxic environment, but it was clear to see on camera. And obviously, for, for yourself, you, you're going to be involved in some really interesting storylines coming up in the next few weeks on TV. That that must be something you're really looking forward to being a part of, you know, having such a centre stage on the show. Well, it's, it's always positive and everything is moving in a constructive direction. And as I said earlier, the, the impact locker room, the environment is quite similar to TNA in its early stages. So it's a much more welcoming and a less toxic environment, a uh, much more cooperative effort, much more community atmosphere, and recognizing that this is another development stage as somebody who has been there before in many different companies. It's always fun to be a part of that because now you're setting the tone for for things later on down the, down the line. With having new opportunities come up, new matchups, the direction of the company uh, moving forward, I'm far more experienced than I have been in the past. So now I'm even better equipped to to accept or to adapt than I was in the past. So it, it becomes much more fun in that sense. So it's interesting to see where we're going, but I'm all in and I'm here to I'm here to contribute. And just finally then, in terms of 2017 and how it will pan out for the rest of the year, what, what would your main aim be? What, you know, if there was one aim that you could say right now, what would it be in terms of the rest of the year? The rest of the year, uh, my direction has always been up. I only move forward and I've conquered virtually everything in impact with the exception of the, the world championship. And 
I, I did tell management when I came in, I want Lashley at the time because it, he's never seen anything like me at my size. I'm not a Rey Mysterio. I'm not a Matt Seidel. I'm much more aggressive. I'm much more ferocious with my attack, and I'm more consistent. So with that type of matchup, that's a new matchup for somebody as, as credible and somebody as decorated as Lashley. Um, right now, Alberto has the championship. I'm not backing down to anybody. I don't really care who has the championship. They're going to have to face me one way, shape, or form, and they're probably not going to like what happens on the other end because it's it seems to be uh, almost cultured now that when you're in that top position, you start reverting to a gimmick, and I hate that because in order for us to succeed, pro wrestlers have to be respected as athletes, not as actors, not as entertainers, not as a gimmick. These are men and women who are sacrificing their bodies for business, and yet you're treated as a devalued, a devalued uh, novelty? Absolutely not. I've been working my butt off to earn respect ever since I began, and it's not going to stop anytime soon. And if you put the world champion in front of me, he's going to find out, just like anyone else would, that it's based off of respect and it's based off of credibility, so you better be prepared. 